the accounting giant PwC is facing an existential crisis. Revelations that its senior partners misused confidential government information to help multinational tech companies avoid tax has rocked the firm to its foundations. The firm has launched an independent investigation headed by Ziggy Switkowski. Meanwhile, PwC Australia's chief executive Tom Seymour has quit. A senior partner has been banned from working in the industry and the firm's most senior global partners have flown in in a desperate attempt at damage control. This saga began in 2014 when PwC partner Peter Collins was advising Treasury on ways to tax the big global tech companies fairly, which was a key strategy of Joe Hockey, who was Treasurer at the time. According to a treasure trove of emails released by the Senate a fortnight ago, Collins leaked the information to as many as 53 partners, who then approached 14 global companies with a plan on how to dodge the new rules. Here's a snippet from the 138 pages of emails. Awesome for our multinational anti-avoidance law defense work. Puts us in a great place. The names of all the recipients except Peter Collins have been redacted but there are calls for all of them to be named and for further action to be taken. David Chow there. Well, the Labor Senator Deborah O'Neill has been pursuing the consultancy firm over the scandal. She says there's now more uncertainty than before. Stepping down from the board of partners and remaining a partner uh, is rather an interesting way of saying I've stepped aside. Uh, I think there's more... Uh, uncertainty about what's going on with PwC. Uh, they haven't really come out with any really significantly transparent moves. Uh, this is about a, a cover-up, in my view. They've employed Mr Switkowski in uh, their own name. They have given him powers that they have declared internally but not publicly about exactly what the terms of reference are, and they're paying his wages. Uh, whatever's going on with the Switkowski review, it is not an independent review. It is an internal in-house review for PwC. And it's way after the fact uh, of the, what's a matter of public record now, which was the theft of information from the Australian people by somebody who knew what they were doing when they signed a confidentiality agreement. And nonetheless, Mr Peter John Collins, former partner of PwC, took, took the information took it back to a whole lot of people at PwC Australia and internationally and went ahead to monetise that for his personal gain and the gain of the company. So, Senator, what would you prefer to see? Well, I think we need a very careful uh, accountability regime to be employed to have a look at what happened with PwC. The Tax Practitioner Board have done a good job of putting on the record now uh, what occurred. But that came to light because of the work of the Senate. And I believe that the Senate has a job of work to do in pursuing the transparency that's needed around this matter. Um, at this point of time, there's a new CEO, an interim CEO being appointed at PwC. I've asked uh, through media, uh, because that's the best opportunity I've had so far prior to estimates, I've asked for her to confirm that she's not one of the blacked out identities on the 144 pages of emails. Uh, there has been no response to that. Well, Senator, it's been reported that the global chair of PwC, Bob Moritz, has said that the behaviour goes against the culture and values of the firm. Do you think this is a pervasive culture within PwC or just amongst a select few? Well, let, let's be clear about what PwC have done. They brought in the executives from the US to come and clean up what they must clearly see as a very big mess in in. Australia. Uh, and the reality is, you know, I'm hearing from all sorts of whistleblowers about cultural practices, not just related to this matter, that have been going on at PwC for a very, very long time. People who've been trying to blow the whistle internally, people who have left, people who've reported, people who've been silenced, people who've been forced to sign NDA agreements around sexual harassment. There's more to come out about what's been going on at PwC. No wonder they're trying to go to ground and the Switkowski uh, independent review, so-called independent review, is just another effort at cover-up, which seems to be, according to the sources that are contacting me, the cultural practice that has been uh, long, uh, long happening at, at PwC. And what about from a wider industry perspective? Do you think that this culture is going on at other large consulting firms? 
Well, I, I wouldn't say it's the same culture because each place, you know, has its own particular flavour of practice. But let's just look at KPMG. Uh, the only reason we found out about the cheating scandal around their their, um, their their cohort who were undertaking studies was because the international arm through the US identified the problem. That wasn't picked up by Australian regulators. That wasn't picked up by Cairns Australia, who was supposed to be regulating the auditors. There've been a, there's been a cloud over EY with a number of issues as well. Um, there's the robo debt in uh, reporting that involved PwC. There have been questions around Deloitte. You don't need me to document them. They're a matter of public record now that there have been concerns about practices in these big partnerships. And part of the problem is that, you know, partnership law uh, only allows up to 20 partners in most circumstances, but the partnership law was amended to allow up to 1,000 partners. And at PwC, it's in the 900s now. Um, that structure means that the Corporations Act doesn't apply to that partnership. And it's been a place in which this culture of hiddenness and shared responsibility, but also shared silence, has been allowed to fester. Well, is part of the problem that there's little disincentive for these companies to do the right thing because the laws and the penalties in this country aren't great enough? Well, well, that may be the case. And I think that the investigation into that needs to occur. And of course, we can look at that in an international context. But I'm really mindful of the work done with my Senate colleagues uh, just a few years ago when we delivered a report into the auditing sector. And I'm particularly mindful of the, the great camaraderie that I had with the National Senator for New South Wales, John Wacker Williams. Um, you know, we were uh, gobsmacked, frankly, at some of the practices that were uncovered in the course of that inquiry. Uh, and the reality is we did make a number of recommendations and I know that EY have been talking about whether they might need to separate their assurance practice from their consulting practice. And, and this was something that happened in England uh, because the problems we're talking about, you know, which are driven in my view by greed, hubris, ego, and a lack of ethical fibre, um, are not uncommon across the world uh, for people who think that they can, you know, skate close to the edges of the law, if not break the law. Senator O'Neill, thank you. Thank you.